Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Sandra and I make videos all about cybersecurity. And in today's video, I wanted to cover something I really wanted to make a video on in a while. And that is the top seven worst viruses of all time. These are gonna be ranked based on how dangerous they were and the amount of money that the virus cost in damages, as well as actual money lost. So the first one on this list is MyDoom, which cost an estimated $38 billion in damages. So depending on who you're asking, this is the number one worst computer virus in history. And specifically, this piece of malware was a worm and it spread itself from the host machine to other users through email. So you actually see that the big malware cases out there are really based on worms that spread itself to multiple people through mass emailing. And at the peak of the MyDoom worm, in 2004, 25% of all email being sent was actually through MyDoom. So, so you can actually see the scale of the worm. And if you guys aren't familiar with what a worm is, a worm is really just a piece of malware where their main intention is really to spread to other users. So it basically replicates itself and makes copies of itself to send either through the network or through email or some other way that machines communicate. And specifically for MyDoom, the worm was replicating and spreading itself through email contact lists. And then once it's at its next victim's machine, it'll basically do the same thing, find its contact list, and then basically keep spreading. So you can really see how exponential the growth of worms can be, and they can really bring down the speed of your network, your machine, and they can really bring down computers and networks to a very slow crawl. So basically that's exactly what MyDoom did. It would go into these infected machines and then scrape addresses, email addresses, and then it would also use those infected machines as part of their botnet to then go on and perform DDoS attacks, which are distributed denial of service attacks on other platforms and organizations. And DDoS attacks are usually used to take down certain websites or take down certain servers. And believe it or not, MyDoom is actually still active out there. It is still a worm that actually, that actually generates around 1% of all phishing emails out in the wild. And another thing is that the creator of, of the MyDoom malware has never been caught even though there was a $250,000 reward put out for information regarding this person's identity. All right, so the second malware on this list is also actually a worm, which may or may not be a surprise to you guys, but this worm is actually called Sobig or Sobig. So the total number of damages caused by this virus was $30 billion across multiple different countries, including the US, Canada, and Asia. There were actually different versions of this worm that were that were created and put into the wild from Sobig A through Sobig F, and Sobig F being the most dangerous out of all of them. And the way that this worm was able to spread itself was basically to disguise itself as a legitimate as a legitimate computer software, which can kind of make it similar to a Trojan horse in that sense. And a Trojan horse is basically some software that acts like it does some useful purpose to the user, but it actually also has a dark side where it steals information or where there's some kind of spyware or adware that is also included in that program. And similar to the MyDoom worm, the creator of this malware was also never found. And who knows if they may or may not be the same person. All right, so the next piece of malware on this list is the I Love You virus, which caused a total of $15 billion in damages. And the way that they calculate these damages numbers is usually when these viruses infect organizations and it either takes down actual technology like, like web servers and application servers, or it's taking away time from actual manpower, whether that's employees dealing with the virus, trying to clean it up, and incident response that spun up specifically around this piece of malware. So that's kind of where the estimates come from. But the I love you virus was really interesting in a way, in a way that they basically sent out emails and told the receiver of the email that they wrote them a love letter and it would attach a text file, but this text file is not actually a text file. It's some kind of executable that actually runs once you open it. They basically just change the name of the file so users think it's a text file and, and are tricked into opening it. Because obviously if someone gets an email from someone that says, I love you, then that actually surprisingly makes a lot of people want to open that file. And this virus was really big in the year 2000. So obviously there wasn't that much buzz around phishing attacks and phishing emails. So you can probably guess why this virus was able to spread so quickly. But basically, after you open this text file, the malware will basically send copies of itself to every contact in your email list to the point where it spread to more than 10 million PCs. And what's funny about this virus is that it was actually written by a college student named Onel de Guzman. Hopefully I'm not butchering that name. There's definitely a few sources that tell different stories about why this person wrote this piece of malware. Some of them say that he was trying to map out the overall network of, of the World Wide Web and seeing how many devices were out there. But some of them also say that he wrote this virus to steal passwords so he could log in to certain online services and subscriptions that he wanted to use for free. All right, the next one on this list is WannaCry. WannaCry is probably the most popular ransomware attacks that have ever happened. And this is probably the one that you learn about the most in your intro to IT or intro to security courses. This one is a lot more recent than the previous ones I mentioned. 
in 2017 was when WannaCry was at its peak in terms of in terms of impact and it's estimated to have cost around $4 billion in damages. And for those of you who may not be familiar with, with what ransomware is, it's essentially a malware that, that encrypts or basically locks up all of your files on your machine where you're unable to access your files, you're unable to open any of them. Sometimes you aren't able to do anything on that device anymore. And it'll usually ask you to send some amount of money in Bitcoin to some Bitcoin wallet that the attacker has. And there's usually some kind of time constraint. For example, they may ask you to do it within three days. And if you don't pay up, they will either they will either delete all the data on your machine or they will threaten to send all of your personal images and files and everything to people in your contact list. So obviously ransomware is very, very bad. And especially when they get into big organizations where they're locking up entire servers of data, specifically customer data and personal information that a business needs to run. A lot of companies do actually end up paying the fee to decrypt to decrypt their data, which ends up costing companies millions, billions of dollars just from ransomware attacks. And I actually have a video on the last very big ransomware attack on Colonial Pipeline, and I can link that video below if you guys want to learn more specifically about ransomware attacks. But the WannaCry ransomware infected PCs across more than 150 countries worldwide. And for those that didn't pay, they basically had to restart their systems from scratch, which obviously can cause millions and millions of dollars in itself. It specifically was worse for computers that were using out-of-date operating systems and was stopped when a 2022 year old security researcher in the UK actually found a way to turn off to turn off the ransomware. All right, the next piece of malware on this list is Zeus, which comes in with damages at about $3 billion. Now, obviously that's a lot of money, but compared to the previous ones that we mentioned, it doesn't sound as damaging relatively, but these are, st but these are still very, very hard impacting malware. So Zeus became really big in 2007 and was so dangerous to the point where they actually infected 88% of all Fortune 500 companies. So this malware was definitely targeting specifically large organizations or organizations that had large computer networks. Zeus was a computer virus that created a botnet, which means that it basically takes a bunch of victim machines, thousands and thousands of PCs, and adds them to their zombie botnet to then use for future DDoS or denial of service attacks. After Zeus took over these machines, it was able to allow the attacker to go into the systems and transfer money into secret bank accounts. And there were more than 100 people who were actually involved in the creation of Zeus, and almost all of them were also arrested in the US. So the Zeus botnet isn't active as much nowadays, but some of their source code is still used for botnets that are used across the world. And the next piece of malware is Code Red, which caused about $2.4 billion in damages. So Code Red was, surprise surprise, another worm that hit just about under 1 million host machines and it specifically infected web pages. And it would display the words hacked by Chinese, so the virus basically attacked websites of infected machines and it also was responsible for a DDoS attack on, on the US White House website to the point where the White House actually had to change their IP address because of Code Red. And a funny story about this virus is that it was named Code Red because the security employees who actually found this vulnerability were drinking Mountain Dew Code Red at the time that it was discovered. All right, so the last virus I wanted to cover on this list, which cost about $1.2 billion in damages. So Slammer is interesting in that it's a SQL worm and it infected about 200,000 computers in 2003. And the computer virus basically selects random IP addresses from different devices and then exploits its vulnerabilities and then it'll go on to send itself to other machines. It would then use these victim machines to create a DDoS attack, and the DDoS attack specifically targeted large internet hosts, which then ended up significantly slowing down overall network traffic. Slammer was also targeting specifically banks in the US and Canada. One of the biggest sectors that were impacted by the Slammer worm were financial companies in the US and Canada, to the point where the worm took down ATMs across, across many, many locations and basically made it so that customers were no longer able to access their money, which obviously can cause another kind of widespread, widespread harm. This attack also had its second showing in 2016, where it was launched from multiple different countries outside of the US. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below any other large impacting or highly damaging viruses, viruses and malware that you have seen or heard of. This is obviously not a holistic list. I'm sure there are many other viruses and zero day exploits out there just, just in the wild that haven't even, that haven't been found yet that could cause even more damages especially as more and more of the world is coming online and so many of us are relying on the internet to do our jobs, to go to school, even to just order groceries. So I'm sure this list that we is not comprehensive and it will likely always be growing. 
All right, so that's it for this video. If you guys found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. And let me know in the comments below if there are any videos that you'd like to see from me in the future. I post videos every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Sundays at 12 p.m. But let me know if you guys would prefer if I did 12 p.m. on Wednesdays and 12 p.m. on Sundays. Since I'm not sure if posting at 2 p.m. on Wednesdays is really that different from posting at 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. So let me know in the comments below if you guys, if there's a time that you guys would prefer me posting or if you don't really care and you're okay with either. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching again and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.